Hello and welcome to Environmental Science and Technology. I'm Dr. Steve Goodman and today we're going to be looking at the PPB ray. Now this monitor is a PPB level detection photonization detector. So this is used for very low readings of organic compounds. Now primarily this is used in indoor air quality applications or for hazmat response, um, particularly as sort of civil defence applications. So the unit is very similar to the Mini Ray 3000 and the Mini Ray Lite. It's just significantly more advanced, so it comes in the same sort of format. You have your normal filter to a hydrophobic filter on the end of it with your wand. Uh, this particular unit has an integrated radio with it, so um, I can actually monitor it from a distance if needs be. But other than that, uh, it has a detection range of 0 parts per billion up to about 10,000 ppm. When it's in PPB range, it's uh, 0 PPB through to 10 ppm. So, we're just going to have a quick look at what we can do with the unit. Firstly, we're going to just go through the normal menus so I can show you what we can see here. Now you can see we've got 30 parts per billion of ambient VOCs. Now we're indoors, so you'd expect to see some sort of VOC knocking around. This is a particularly low reading. Normally indoors, if you're in a proper indoor environment, lots of office furniture, that sort of thing, you'd expect to see in the region of about 300 parts per billion. So if we quickly scroll through the screens here, so we've got 34 ppb-ish on screen at the moment, and we've currently got TWA of 8 ppb, a stell of 9 ppb, and a peak of 470 ppb. Date and time format. You can see, like I said, this one's got wireless Bluetooth on it, and this is giving the status of the Bluetooth and the associated radio communication settings there. Calibration gas is currently set to isobutanine. We can change this by saying yes and change it to something else. And we have a correction factor of one as our measurement gas is isobutanine. And this is just a complete summary. And if we'd like to communicate and download the data log, when we get to enter PC communications and stop measurement, we just say yes. We're not going to do that now. And that takes you back to the original screen. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to show you quickly how to calibrate the instrument, as this is subtly different to all other um, of Ray Systems PIDs. So if we press power and no at the same time and hold for five seconds, Sometimes it will ask you for a password if it's the first time that you've been running this unit. It will ask for a password and it's normally four zeros. So we've got our calibration menu, measurements menu, alarms, data logs and general monitor set up. So we're going to quickly go into the calibration menu. Now if I want to do a zero calibration on a PPB level instrument, I need to do things slightly differently. Um, I need to take the instrument and apply a zeroing filter tube to the front. Otherwise, as you can see, we're in an indoor environment, we've got VOCs around. If I were to zero, zero in that, then we would be having a falsely high zero point. So we're not gonna do that. So I'm just gonna do a quick span calibration. Now, instead of 100 ppm isobutylene, you can see here that it's actually 10 ppm isobutylene. So for PPB level instruments, we always calibrate with 10 ppm. So it asks me to I want to change that value. I'm going to say no. I have my 10 ppm isobutylene here. I'm going to turn that on. Apply the gas. It will auto detect it. And it will calibrate for 30 seconds. So that's now calibrated. It will show a live reading of exactly what the measurement is. So now we press back. And back again. And that has now saved, and you'll see it starting to clear down. And you'll see that it does clear down very quickly. Now, because we're reading the PPB levels, it'll take a little bit longer because you've got to get over that diffusion gradient. We've now done that, so I'm going to press power and no again and take you through the rest of the menus. So, if we go across here and we end up in the measurement menu, this is where we can change the measurement gas, measurement units, tube selection is for the Ultra A3000 model, and that's it here. So, we go across to alarms. 
Now this is where I can change the high alarm, the low alarm, stow alarm, TWA alarm, and I can change the alarm mode. So if I want to change the alarm mode, I can put it into auto reset or latching. And you can set what you want to come on in the alarm. So you've got buzzer and lights. So if we go back, we now get to the data logging section. So if I go to the data log, I can clear the data log here. I can set the interval. I can select the data that I want to record. So if I just pop into that momentarily. So I've got minimum values. So I'm going to actually turn that on. So minimum values, average values, maximums. We'll toggle that on. And that's all the data logging that we can have. So if I save that, so data log type, automatic or manual, so that's the difference between it automatically data logging or I have to turn it on. And that's it for data logging. Now if we scroll across to the monitor setup, now this is where I can turn radio power on and off, change the operation mode, so if I select this I can go into search mode or hygiene mode, enter a site ID, user ID, enter a user mode, so if I go into this you can have viewer, basic or advanced, I'm going to put it into advanced now, save that, change the date, change the time, change the pump duty cycle, change the pump speed, so if I go into this I can put it into a low pump speed, this just essentially conserves the battery a little bit, so if I say done and save you can see that the pump speed is reduced significantly. Now this does affect the response of the unit, so it will take longer to actually take a measurement because you're not drawing the air as quickly as you were before across the sensor. Temperature units, we're in the UK, so I'm going to put that to a degree Celsius. Save that. And then we can change the language. Real-time protocols, well that's basically for communications, so if you wanted you can have uh, peer to modem, peer to peer, uh, peer to modem wireless and peer to peer wireless. So we'll come out of that, we don't want to play with that too much. Power on zero for a PPP level instrument, always have it turned off. So, thank you very much for watching this video. If you'd like to contact us at Environmental Science and Technology, please go to www.environced.com or alternatively email us at info at environced.com or call us on 01904 373 018. Thank you for watching.